One of the joys of being an audiophile is experiencing your music with new headphones or IEMs. But with several new products every month, that method can become cost prohibitive very quickly. Tangzu decided to make the process a little bit more difficult. Recently, they released their Z Tian Wu Heyday. This planar magnetic IEM costs $200 and is a special collaboration that Linsoul Audio brought to life. Linsoul was kind enough to send me a unit to review. As you know, this is a retailer that has every kind of audiophile gear in stock. Plus, they have ventured into exclusive products, which potentially opens new ideas into the market. Check out Linsoul if you're interested in the most recent audiophile products. Now, let's delve into the Heyday. The Heyday uses 14.5mm planar drivers and is a reimagining of the last iteration of the Wu Tian IEM. Linsoul claims that the Heyday quote makes changes on bass and highs based on the sound signature of the last version. Linsoul and Tangzu provide an FR graph to compare the two iterations of this IEM. There are two observations. First, both IEMs have very similar response curves. Second, the minor changes do indeed seem to correlate to the range Tangzu says in their marketing. The company says their goal was to bring a more neutral and balanced sound with more thick and spacious signature. Sadly, as with many IEM companies, Tangzu muddles the water with their description of the signature. They claim they created an IEM with both a balanced and neutral signature, which is a contradiction. As for build, Tangzu and Linsoul spend a lot of time and effort in their marketing describing the metal build and included cable. Without doubt, the Heyday is a large planar IEM. It's about the same size as the 7Hz Timeless. The shell is made of aluminum and has an etched design on the outside. It is smooth and does not have any sharp or irregular protrusions. It is lighter than Moondrop Stellaris and Blonde BL Max. The Heyday comes with a full assortment of accessories. You get balanced and bass enhancement ear tips, plus a set of foam ear tips for those who want more isolation and stronger fit. The Heyday's cable is a two-pin design. It is thick and has an eye-catching color. The talking point with the cable is its detachable terminations. The Hades terminators can be quickly swapped between 3.5mm, 2.5mm, and 4.4mm. The only issue with the cable is that it transmits a significant amount of microphonics. You will hear noise when walking or simply if the cable rubs against any surface. It's like your own personal stethoscope. Finally, Tangzu includes a large zipper storage box that has plenty of room for all the accessories. As for comfort, I think this IEM does a fairly good job at sitting securely within my ears. But because of its large design, it does jut out. When used with properly fitting ear tips, the Heyday should stay in place with normal use. I could easily wear this IEM for about 3 hours before needing a break. Overall, the Heyday is built quite well, has very good accessories and reasonable comfort. Unfortunately, the issue some people might find a little bit of a deal breaker is that microphonic cable. I had a lot of time with the Heyday. For over 4 weeks, I used it as one of my go-to IEMs. I paired it with my Matrix Mini iPro 3, the FIO BTR7, Low 2 Paw 6000, Low 2 Paw S1, Ego Zerta ITM03, Brooklyn DAC Plus, and also plugged it straight into my computer sound cards. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD, streamed low-resolution tracks from Spotify, watched movies and TV shows through streaming services, and had lengthy listening sessions in the comfort of my home, while working out, and during hikes and walks. Obviously, I used the various cable terminators on the heyday. I also compared against several alternative IEMs in the market. So, I think I can convey my thoughts about this product's sound signature. For this analysis, I will rely on the balanced ear tips. The bass and foam ear tips do alter some of the presentation and I will briefly explain that now. The bass ear tips will marginally increase mid-bass and decrease vocals. Clarity is very slightly reduced as well. The foam ear tips have a greater emphasis on bass than either the bass or balanced ear tips. Clarity is least of all on the foam ear tips. Soundstage is decreased the most on the foam ear tips, followed by the bass ear tips and the balanced ear tips provide the greatest soundstage out of all these three. 
Having said that, what does the heyday sound like? The frequency response graph in the marketing implies a U-shaped signature. My experience was not entirely consistent with this graph. The heyday has a sub-bass roll-off. This was patently obvious when I listened to my various bassy tracks, including Mountains, Conquer, and the Sicario soundtrack. Transcends is very quick, noticeably faster than what I heard on the neutral Moondrop quarks. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass was easy to discern on the heyday. Compared to the Moondrop Quarks, Aria, and Starfield, the Heyday has more clarity, separation, and detail in the bass region, but it also rendered less impactful drum strikes. I compared to several planar IMs as well. The S12 Pro has more neutral bass than the Heyday, with a bit more emphasis throughout. Clarity and separation is similar, however. But the Timeless and Stellaris have similar, though not identical sounding bass roll-off as the Heyday. The Muse Hi-Fi Power has more mid-bass than all of these planar IEMs. The mids on the heyday are marginally forward. The vocals stand ahead of instruments, usually by one step. Drums, even when emphasized in a mix, never vie for attention with any other element. On the flip side, vocals on the heyday receive a noticeable emphasis to sibilance and grain. There's clearly a 2 to 5 kHz peak in the tuning, which can become somewhat fatiguing for anybody who is sensitive to it. Overall clarity in this region is fairly good. No instrument overwhelmed any other, vocals were always clear, and individual elements were fairly obvious when the mix intended that to occur. Multiple vocalists were usually easy to hear as well. Compared to the Quarks, Aria, and Starfield, the heyday is hands down clearer in the mids. The Quarks render the most neutral rendition out of all four of these IEMs. It does not push vocal sibilance or grain. The Aria and Starfield present vocals a step behind drums and have less clarity and separation than what the Heyday provides. The S12 Pro and Heyday have somewhat similar mids rendition. Both have similar clarity and separation in this region. But the S12 Pro has a greater sibilance push. Vocals are a little bit closer to the ears on the S12 Pro. The Stellaris and S12 Pro actually have a very similar mids presentation. So, the Stellaris acts pretty much the same compared to the Heyday. The Timeless is a bit closer to neutral than the Heyday in the mids region. While the Timeless does emphasize sibilance, it is marginally less. Clarity and separation is a bit more obvious on the Heyday. The Muse Hi-Fi Power has recessed mids. Vocals generally stand shoulder to shoulder with instruments, drums overpower vocals. The Heyday has noticeably greater separation and clarity. The Heyday's treble sounds close to neutral. There's no harsh peak, but it seemed that low to mid treble was a bit emphasized. Upper treble seemed neutral, and never became harsh. Clarity and separation here was probably about average when considering other planar IMs. The quarks are more neutral compared to the heyday. The quarks does not emphasize this frequency in contrast to the heyday. The aria and starfield emphasize lower treble but roll off upper treble. The S12 Pro has a mid to upper troubled emphasis, which is a little greater than what I heard on the heyday. The Stellaris has a mostly neutral trouble but a slightly emphasized upper trouble. The Muse Hi-Fi Power has an upper trouble push that is fairly obvious when compared to the heyday. The Timeless has more neutral rendition than the S12 Pro, Stellaris, Power, and the heyday. Overall clarity in the troubled region on the heyday is similar to that of the S12 Pro. Overall detail retrieval on the Heyday is on par with some other planar IEMs. In my new light test, the Heyday rendered 10 clear footsteps. This is similar to the S12 Pro. Both the Heyday and S12 Pro have greater detail retrieval than the Quarks, Aria, Starfield, Stellaris, Timeless, and Muse Hi-Fi Power. As for soundstage, I would say that the Heyday is wider than the Quarks, Starfield, and Aria, without doubt. However, it is about as wide as the S12 Pro and the Tin Hi-Fi T2. The bottom line is that the Heyday's presentation, in my opinion, does not really correlate with the frequency response graph. And again, response graphs are not a reliable standalone indicator of sound signature for IEMs and headphones. The bass and foam ear tips for the Heyday do increase bass presence, but at the cost of clarity and soundstage. And unfortunately for some, the typical Chi Fi sibilance peak is still present, though not to the extreme of some alternative options in the market. There was a time when planar magnetic IEMs were very rare and very expensive. That is no longer the case. If you're curious about this technology and what it can offer, then you have little reason to immediately jump to Odyssey level prices. 
Just as with dynamic drivers, planar IEMs have a varied landscape of sound signatures. And just as with their dynamic counterparts, finding a neutral sound signature with planars is not particularly easy. This brings us to the heyday. Overall, I think it is a competitive and perfectly fine product. It is well built, fairly comfortable, and provides plentiful accessories. The cable might mar your experience due to its microphonic nature, but I very much appreciate the swappable termination, so there is that. Sound signature is a very personal matter. You have to decide if this IM fits your style. If you're not begging for a bass and want a vocal-centric IM, and also don't mind a bit of 2 to 5 kHz peak, then the Hide might be worth looking into. For $200, I think Tang Zhu and Linsoul have made a good product that makes choosing in this market that much more difficult.